Let's get to the yep. mailbag. So if you want to be a part of the show, bluewhiteillustrated.com, sign up for just $1, be on the message board Wednesday night or Thursday morning before we record the show. Uh, submit your question on the BWA mailbag thread or at Thomas Frank Carr on Twitter. We'll get select tweets that I think are interesting and worthwhile uh, to add to the show. All are worthwhile, but like, what do we have time for? So, Nate, let's start with everyone's favorite topic. Let's start with NIL. Tigar asks, crystal yes. ball for us where you see NIL or rather pay for play going forward in the Big Ten. Ohio State's going to pony up. Which are the other surprise programs that may possibly keep up? Hmm. I mean, are we answering that first? Or are we going to get to the second? The yeah, second we'll get to that second part of the. Back. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to the second part later. Okay. Yeah. So I think Michigan State is one to watch. I that, think yep. that look. Here's the thing. To me, uh, yeah, who who did the images? Everything. Whose tagline was that? I don't know. It doesn't matter. But. There's a truth to it. Mm -hmm. And so when Mel Tucker is out on the field in recruiting images, right, that are tweeted out to the world, standing in front of a Bentley with his recruits, right, or yeah. standing in front of this, like, exotic Lamborghini, whatever the car is, uh, that creates an image yep. for Michigan State of Flash, right? And, yep. and so I think that that... It looked like there's going to be different routes to what programs want to become. Yeah. Bottom line, right? Uh, and, and this has always been the case, but Miami a few years, and it, it always feels like we pick on Miami, but Miami didn't apologize for the turnover chain, right? Like right. they leaned into that. They said, Hey, we're going to have fun, right? I, I, you look at your other schools, you, you do, you know, your due diligence in the recruiting process and you figure out where you want to go to school. But if you're coming to Miami, uh, we're going to have fun and, and we're going to make this a thing and it's going to be gaudy and we don't care. People like it or not doesn't matter. Right. I don't anticipate seeing James Franklin and recruits to Penn State football on the turf at Beaver Stadium with brand new sports cars. Yeah. One, because I don't think that's what James Franklin wants to project as an image, but yeah. two, and maybe more important, the grounds crew at Beaver Stadium would never allow <laughs> a car to be driven onto the turf. We just uh, we started the show Stadium. with turf grass so, management, so you're right. And by the way, it would not be a sports car yeah. around here, I wouldn't imagine. I think it would be a truck. Just regionally, truck. that feels more sure. accurate. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think you got so, a, you got a good one there in Michigan State. I can't I can't think of another one. I guess Maryland. I you know maybe Maryland is one where you could say they might have yep. some push with NIL. Yep, Rutgers. No, I think I, uh, yeah. Oh. I mean, I haven't I haven't seen that yet. Uh, yeah. I haven't seen Rutgers yet. I, look, I, I do think that there is a even when people point to Ohio State, right? The things that Ryan Day said about needing $13 million, mm -hmm. that was to a group of boosters, okay? And so it's going to sound foreign here, but the very concept of having to verbalize this to the donors says that they're not quite up to speed either. Yeah. To me. Yep. Because I agree. that conversation is not that conversation is not happening at Texas A&M. It yeah. doesn't have to be spoken. Yeah. Right. It, it's, it's like, hey, yo. Right. Yeah. Versus it's it's more Alabama like Alabama has to do that. The conversation is flipped. Ohio it, State. Yeah. It's it's at these other places where we're talking about an NIL. The person with the money is saying, OK, what can we do with this pile of cash? What do you want from this pile of cash? Because now. I'm in the Correct. game. I'm allowed to be in the game. Here's some money instead of yep. going to your money people and saying, hey, this is how it works now. Yeah, I, I wrote about this yep. um, and kind of the situation at Penn State and what you just referenced. And a lot of, you know, the, the thoughts and ideas came from this show. But like this concrete idea that there seems to be this division at Penn State right now when it comes to NIL. There are the people that are on the side of, OK, 
This is the new world. Dive in head first. Doesn't matter if you're diving into water or sludge. Plug your nose and start swimming. They're the guy. They're the people that are on board mm-hmm. with Franklin and his messaging. And then there is the other group that seems to be saying Penn State is going to compete and be success with honor. Not the name, image, and likeness program, but the mantra. We are going to be that. And we are going to be successful without NIL because the force of Penn State and the force of the logo, I guess. Yep. And that is causing a division within the program that, that is really causing what I think is, is James Franklin's frustration is this schism of not having everybody on the same page. And at yep. places like Ohio State and Alabama, maybe they're getting on the same page. Maybe those messages by Nick Saban and Ryan Day are hitting. But at Penn State, as we've talked about before, it's not. It does not seem to be hitting, and I think that's really where the the conversation surrounding all of these questions is. So let's get to the other side of what Tigar says and says, what's the first rule change institu- instituted by either conference or nationally to have some teeth and start making a level playing field, which is ultimately what this is about. It's not about getting money for players, for the coaches. It's about leveling the playing field so that everyone's working with the same equipment. So oh, yeah. what do you think? I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, look, like I would, I would, if I'm, if I'm just throwing something out there, I'm going to say college football players as employees, they hit employee status that a hundred percent changes the game. It, it just upends the dynamic of amateurism and everything that's behind it. And the NCAA can come back into some sort of, uh you know, institution that makes rules and enforces them. It, 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 that change would allow for that to happen to say, Hey, you're an employee. Uh, employees can make X amount of dollars per year. That's kind of the limit. That's, that's what everyone has to work with. Right. Maybe yeah. it's like a, all of a salary cap. I, I, I don't well, know. It would have I mean, to be I think that that it would have to be, and, but and they're going to get sued. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to get sued, and they're going to lose. Yeah, and so it's not about it's not about the NCAA anymore yep. at all. It's yep. about the United States of America, right? Like it's about it's about Congress and the yes. Supreme Court and those things that are so far beyond my pay grade yeah. that I I can't even begin to because that I mean if you if you listen to people if you listen to the right people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I say the right people, I'm just saying people who are paying attention and who are, who are knowledgeable about this. Yeah. Uh, Mark Emmert is a boogeyman. I get it. I get it. Nobody likes him. Fine. Whatever. I, I don't know him one way or the other, but his leadership's been not great for the NCAA at, and that's being nice. Um, yeah. When he says, when he says that the only solution to this is Congress, yeah. it's not wrong. Is that wrong? It is like, that's, that's it. And so what, what are the odds in our political environment that there's going to be some type of unification to, to get to 60 votes in the Senate uh, over an issue of, of college football players being paid? Are, will they even take that issue up? Yeah. And the answer to me seems very unlikely. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, yeah. that's, and you're going to have to, you're going to have to deal with see it. a way out of this otherwise. Yeah, you're going to have to deal with a lot of things you're not comfortable with if you're a college football fan because when that happens, what we're talking about here is is a non uh what's what's the exemption for a monopoly for collusion and all of those things that would be the standard of antitrust. And thank you, antitrust. The NFL, Major League Baseball, hockey, sports has an antitrust exemption for their business model to work. So, there has to be agreed yep. upon terms of how that works. And the NCAA doesn't have that power because, as you just pointed out, that is a part of the United States uh, culture and the way we do things in this country is what are the rules going to be decided that is that is above the big the Big Ten could set whatever precedent they want and say that, OK, in our next media deal, X number of dollars is going to the players, X number of dollars is blah, 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 blah. And then eventually yep. somebody, as you pointed out, will sue. Also, it would have to be. Yep. I think at this point it would have to be pure collusion for it to be for it to even work. And how are you going to get the SEC to agree to the same thing as the ACC and the Big Twelve? 
you're not because they're on different TV deals. So the Big Ten and the a the SEC have more money to work with, so they they're not going to cap whatever they do at what the Big Twelve can do. So then you're truly going yep. into a full m minor league pro sport <clears throat> model where you've got a salary cap, a labor union, uh, negotiations, and every five to six years, you're going to have that story. And, you know, that's that's what it's going to be. Doom and gloom. <laughs> so let's move on to another question. And this is why I say Rutgers and Maryland when I bring up what other schools in the Big Ten might uh, be able to uh, compete with NIL can and this is from another question on the board can UPMC pl uh, pay pit players can Hershey Medical pay Penn State players would this be an avenue to funnel money to players in order to make acquisitions on the open market and I think this what really is important to me here Nate is not that they're hospitals or th but places with large corporations city schools mm -hmm. that previously were disadvantaged Miami would be another place with a city around them businesses around them mm -hmm. have more NIL opportunities so is that something that you're thinking okay now Pitt has an avenue to success in the future where previously they were you know I, I think you would you would be reasonably say without being offensive that their ceiling is what it was last year they can be good and be very competitive <laughs> every five or so years I, uh, uh, okay. I think we need to ta to change this conversation somewhat. Okay? okay, and lay out what what nil is because I think that this gets, I think that this gets confused. Miami is not in a position that it's in because it's in a city. Miami is in the position that it is because a billionaire wants to run a at an athletic department. Right. One person uh, like Penn State can act or think of itself as being different from that. But Penn State hockey doesn't exist without Terry Pagula. It's the same thing, just in different packaging. Right. Is who is rich in your alumni base or people, even if they didn't go to the school that you root for, that root for that school. And so it, all you need is one or two benefactors yeah. who can d decide for them, right? Like, because here's the thing. And <laughs> NIL is taking two forms right now, okay? Penn State and what you see happening at Penn State is the agreements that are made, okay? The, the sponsorship deals, what have you, that are happening. It's two-way. Yeah. The player is receiving compensation for providing a service to the company, right? And yeah. that's that's happening all over the place. That is the spirit of NIL. That is what NIL is supposed to be. Yeah. There's a second avenue that some programs are taking, uh, or not even these programs. It doesn't matter whether the program wants it or not, because it's all legal now. The players can do what they want. Yeah. Uh, the second model is, hey... We don't care what you do, right? Like you don't, yeah. you don't have to actually do something for our business. The, the secret sauce, nobody's talking about this. The secret sauce is having it, setting these up as charitable don't like funds. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that they become tax write-offs. And so what Texas modeled was there's going to be charity work involved for its offensive line, right? Like this was the report is there's going to be charity work involved. And so the donors get a tax write-off, okay? And the players I, sh I are should being have known. By I should have known. That you if you're if you're a rich person, there are so many avenues to keep your money. <laughs> There's so many ways for you to spend a million dollars and not spend a million dollars. That is the way though for it to simply be a transactional nature of, right. hey, in my mind, I, I it doesn't matter what business I run. It, like, none of those things matter. And if the business is a charity, it's yeah. even better. 